Welcome back, Vinyl Community. Reggae spotlight time again. Today looking at Roy Cousins and the Royals. It's a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Those gorgeous harmonies bringing us in. vocal by Roy Cousins. song called Pick Up the Pieces, signature song by Roy Cousins and the Royals, as recorded in the early 1970s. Uh, that song, ostensibly a uh, plea to a lover or love interest to, uh, to pick up the pieces, don't throw them away, can also be in the, some of the, the tradition of some of the great classic Jamaican songs of the period, can also be read in a more universal sense, as he says, um, life can be beautiful if you only try to make it what it could be. Roy Cousins began, he was born in 1949 in Kingston, Jamaica. By the early 1960s, formed the first version of the Royals in the full days of ska music hitting the island. And his early singles were recorded in that style. While the lineup of the group would always be fluid uh, with himself as the leader, chief uh, songwriter, arranger, uh, the original harmonies were fleshed out by Errol Wilson, Keith Smith, and Bertram Johnson. Uh, many of their early singles through the 1960s are collected on this compilation. Sweat, 1964 to 1981. The Royals, other than the original 45s. As far as I know, this is the only way to get many of these songs. Uh, ranging from uh, We Are In The Mood, the rock steady recorded for Duke Reed, through songs for uh, Joe Gibbs, uh, Lloyd Daly and other producers. Uh, Roy would grow increasingly frustrated as time went on that uh, many of his songs were not released when they were recorded by these producers. This was finally capped off in the late 1960s when they recorded the original version of Pick Up the Pieces, that signature song, for Cox and Dodd's Studio One label, where it sat in the vaults, unreleased, which was not an uncommon occurrence at all. Uh, it sat there for a couple of years. Roy finally uh, took, took a break from the music business. He had a full-time job working for the Jamaican post office, so he had a steady income. He was able to sit back, save up his money for a while, and uh, rethink what his plan for the music business would be. He decided the only way forward was to take control of his own music. Uh, he was already arranging and uh, writing the songs. Uh, he decided he also had to finance the sessions, bring all the players together and release them on his own labels and fully take control of his own destiny rather than rely on other producers. And uh, this was the way he went forward. Apparently he saved up $40 from his job at the post office to finance that uh, second version of Pick Up the Pieces. The original cut, by the way, can be found on uh, Studio One Group's Soul Jazz compilation. The Royals Pick Up the Pieces, when it was finally released, uh, found in the vaults by Larry Marshall, another artist I've done a spotlight on. It was credited to The Tempests, which was a name the, um, the group went by for a short time in the 1960s. Roy was uh, heavily influenced by vocal groups like The Drifters and The Temptations, so The Tempests was apparently sort of a uh, tribute to The Temptations. But eventually they went back to the Royals' name to uh, stick with the identity they were most known as. So Roy saved up $40 to finance the session for a second cut of Pick Up the Pieces, uh, only to find that was not enough money to pay all the musicians who were then lining up outside his job at the post office waiting for the rest of their pay. So that was his uh, introduction to uh, how things ran in the music business. The second cut of Pick Up the Pieces proved to be a hit. 
and further singles would follow. Roy was able, because he had a steady income, Roy was able to take his time, craft the songs the way he wanted, get the, the musicians he wanted, and pay for the studio time. And so these singles were of a consistently high standard and were finally compiled into an album called Pick Up the Pieces after that, that hit title track. Uh, this would finally be released in uh, Jamaica and then traveled to the UK where it appeared on the Magnum label around 1978. Uh, this is a second press from 1979. Pick up the pieces, the Royals. This appeared on the Ballistic label, which was distributed by United Artists with its distribution clout. Roy on the back there. And uh, Roy had a, a deal with Ballistic Records, which saw a number of his uh, productions released to the burgeoning UK market. But uh, excellent classic album. I would put this probably in my top 10 reggae albums, definitely of the, the classic harmony tradition. Songs like that title track, Pick Up the Pieces, Ghetto Man, When You're Wrong, Promised Land, Black or Black, Peace and Love, Essential Album. First introduced to me through the Pressure Sounds reissue, which appeared in the early 2000s. Pick up the pieces. Pressure Sounds also put it out a uh, next compilation, Dubbing with the Royals. Roy Cousins was never a huge fan of dub originally. Came out of that uh, vocal tradition where you, you had that exacting standard, you did your best. Uh, kind of thought of dub only as something to fill out the B-side of a 45 with, though he would uh, change his mind and come around later. Uh, from those initial sessions where he recorded that second version of Pick Up the Pieces, also recorded a song called Down Comes the Rain, appearing on his Tomoki label. He would also set up his own labels to release his own productions. Tomoki was one of the first, uh, followed a couple of years later by Wambisi. In later years, he would merge the two into Tomoki Wambisi, a combined entity. Also recorded further versions, as it was kind of the, the way with the with the independent reggae producers. You would record the basic music track with the musicians. Then you could have your singer come in and do your main vocal piece. And then you could also take the, the basic music track and spin it off into a, a DJ or rapped version. You could do some dub versions. You could do instrumentals and kind of extend the, uh, the life in the market, get more value for your money booking the initial studio time. So we had uh, Monkey Fashion by the great Iroy which is a DJ or wrapped cut to um, the Pick Up the Pieces rhythm track, which would come to become, which would become uh, one of the most versioned rhythms in reggae, used over and over again for many years to come. It's also a dub by King Tubbies. That's a 10 inch that appeared on the Pressure Sounds label to tie in with that dubbing in the, with the Royals release. Through his connections with the Ballistic imprint, Roy would release further albums with the Royals, again with shifting lineup of singers. Ten years after appeared in 1979, this time with uh, Barry Llewellyn and Nigel Morris on backing vocals, uh, mainly in extended mixes here in the full-on rocker style. Ballistic imprint again, ten years after. Kind of awesome cover art there. Israel Be Wise. There's Roy back on the back again. Uh, while these next albums would not quite reach the, the heights of um, Pick Up the Pieces, they would all have their moments. Uh, one of the best ones on here is the title track, and uh, If You Want Good, with its puzzling lyric of If You Want Good, Your Nose Have You Run. Many reggae fans have puzzled over that one. Uh, final album with the Royals would appear as Moving On. I only have this one on CD. That would be the last Royals album as Roy left the group to focus on producing other artists. Uh, the group would kind of shift lineups and continue on under a name change as the Jays, recording at uh, Channel One, among others. By the late 1970s, Roy was uh, heavily involved with, um, with uh, marketing his music in the UK, finally moved there permanently. He was actually having a, he was actually going blind from uh, cataracts in his eyes. An operation in London saved his eyesight uh, he ended up uh, marrying again there and eventually settle, settling in Liverpool, 
where he would remain and set up a record shop and as, as well as release his productions with other artists. As I've said, initial, while initially not a fan of dub, he would uh, come around, forces of music, liberated dub would appear with dubs of Royals tracks. Again on the ballistic label. These are all recorded at Channel One, mixed by Ernest Hukim with the Revolutionaries. There would be another one called uh, Freedom Fighters Dub, also credited to Forces of Music, but it is Roy Cousins Royals Tracks. He would do several, as the years went by, as the 80s dawned, he would do several uh, dub albums mixed by the great scientist with uh, people in the kingdom of dub. I think this has been reissued on vinyl recently. I've seen it around one of the local shops with a different cover. People's Choice Dub. I have all these on CD with extended track lists. High Priest of Dub, Scientist. Scientist, the preeminent dub mixer of the early 80s. Uh, he would also work extensively with, as well as vocal groups, where he worked extensively with a group called Knowledge, Stumbling Block. Roy. Uh, groups like Winston Jarrett, or a singer like Winston Jarrett, with whom he released the Wise Man LP. I only have this without a cover, unfortunately. We're on BC label. Uh, revised later lineup of a long-standing Jamaican group called the Gay Lads, with whom he produced the Understanding LP. Very fine vocal harmony group. Again, ballistic label. There would be various artist compilations, like uh, this is one I picked up last year, Sunsplash Showcase with some uh, well-known names like Cornell Campbell, Joss Stitch, as well as really obscure ones like Kopi Copewell, but uh, uniformly excellent tracks on all. Stranger in Love, 12-inch single on the One BC label by Meditation. Nice lover's rock track. Uh, as well as the vocalists, uh, he would... Uh, he would prove unusually uh, productive with DJs or rappers, uh, initially hitting with a DJ called Charlie Chaplin in the early 80s, Chaplin Chant. This is on the yep, Wambisi label again. Charlie Chaplin was kind of a uh, roots and culture oriented DJ of the early 80s, the dance hall period, when that style was uh, starting to fall out of fashion a little bit, but uh, made a bit of a comeback with him and others. Another DJ that uh, Roy worked was working with was uh, Prince Farai, the great Michael Williams, aka Prince Farai, the rockstone, gruff-voiced DJ. Uh, they were working on an album in 1983, which um, was uncompleted. They recorded a, a few tracks, and then uh, Roy Cousins was shocked by the, mur the news of Prince Farai's murder before the album could be completed. He would finally release it as Un Conto Wisisle, Wisiswe, hard to pronounce, Spear of the Nation, the late great Prince Farai. I may do a video on him at some point. Roy would continue with his productions for other artists, far more, um, far more prolific as a producer than he was as a uh, artist. Uh, he's continued releasing his back catalog uh, while he's uh, somewhat private, not heard from too much these days. Apparently, as far as we know, he remains well. His music is uh, well-loved by reggae aficionados. So I'm going to leave you with another classic by the Royals. This is Peace and Love. workers. Come and go with 
me to my Father's house, where we find peace and love. Thanks for tuning in, BC. Let me find peace.